Tracy. <laughs> okay, I would now entertain a motion to appoint Colin Allman Fire Chief, Dennis Powell, Assistant Fire Chief, and any additional full-time or multiple part-time firefighter EMT paramedics as needed and all current volunteers on the roster. Is there a motion? I shall move. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and there is a second. Any further discussion regarding this motion? Hearing none, may we vote please? Uh, Ms. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Nietzsche? Yes. I now entertain a motion to appoint Daniel Gokenauer, a road department employee, and any other full time or part time employees as necessary. Is there a motion? Yes, I move that we appoint Dan Gukenauer and any part time or full time employees as necessary. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Last name's hard to say. Chop <laughs> <laughs> that one up. <laughs> <laughs> He's up there, Margaret. <laughs> Defend yourself. Go ahead. Are you ready to vote? May we vote, please. <laughs> Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Thank you. I now entertain a motion to appoint Richard Zoff, Zoning Inspector for year 2022. I motion? so move. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. And are there? Is there any other discussion regarding that decision? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mrs. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Nature. Yes. Okay. Now, this next part, I. I'm getting there. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 I would now I entertain a motion to, to appoint Joe Fulton to the Zoning Commission, effective of one one twenty two, and ending twelve thirty one twenty five. Joe, Daisy? Full, full time. Okay. Is it a three year or a four year? Four. Five. Or five, I five years. Well, it, it starts 22. But it ends in one year on December and starts in January, so it gets five years. Okay, but I'll just. If you said it was January 1 to January you said 1, you didn't change the, the second year. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, so when it you read it, you said 25 right. instead of 26. But it isn't Greg Schroeder, it's Joe Fulton. Correct. Am I right? What? Uh, I would have to consult the, the list. The, the, the list on the website it shows it 25. Yeah, that, that's five years. Mm -hmm. All 22, all 23, 24, 25. 21, 22, 23. That's only four years. No, that's only four years. Yeah, it's yeah. 26. Yeah, I mean, six. So the website's wrong. So, no, that's the first time. So what are the dates? It says 121 and you're going to 126? Yes. I, I, if if he's program. starting... Yeah, got it. Today he will be done in um, just twenty six yeah. December. Yeah, twenty six. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll straighten it out. <coughs> I I so move. Is there a second? Sure. Is that supposed to say one one twenty two? Yes. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah that's supposed sure. to say one one twenty two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, May we vote, please? Um, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Yes. And I couldn't remember who replaced Linda Parsons. And her she's. Oh, Dave Greg Newark. Schrader? Greg Schrader, yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. Not Greg Schroeder. Schrader. Schroeder. Schrader. Okay. Schrader, well, yeah. just making sure. You want to spell that? S C H R O E D E R? No. No, that's no. Schroeder. Schroeder. No, it's A. It's just an A in there. Okay. S-H-R-A-D-E-R? -E I believe so. Okay. I'd, I'd have to look it up to be absolutely sure. It could, there may not be a C in there. It may be just S-H. Okay. Well, that's it. Next, I entertain a motion to appoint uh, David Newhart to the point. Sorry, we didn't, we didn't move in second grade yet. Well. If you did, I didn't write anything down. Okay, it was moved uh, by Mr. Hollister and was seconded by Ms. Moyer. That was for Joe Fulton. That's for Fulton. Greg shouldn't need to have anything done to him. Greg's been crossed out, folks. Okay. Oh, so we're just scratching out the whole thing. Yep, Greg's, okay, there Greg's we go. gone away. <laughs> so we don't even know spell his name. Okay. <laughs> right. So may we vote on Mr. Fulton? Okay. I move that Joe Fulton be appointed to the Zoning Commission for the correct dates. 
22nd. <laughs> Their term starting this year. Yes, until. I'll second. Okay. Sounds official. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hosser? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And now I entertain a motion to appoint David Newhart to the Board of Zoning Appeals, effective. Um, what? Okay. Wait, he's not already on the Yes, but, oh, he but he's going again. But he's getting the second term. He's going. He, we'll call it, I mean, you could call it reappoint, but oh, still, okay. still basically the same thing. Uh, 1121 and ending 26. 1122, I'm sorry, ending 26. I so move. I second. Um, any further discussion regarding that appointment? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And now I'm going to a motion to establish 2022 pay schedule for full-time employees at current rate with a blank cost of living increase retroactive to January 222. Um, we have traditionally, or at least for the last few years, done a 2% cost of living raise. Uh, any of you who are keeping up with Fox Business or whatever, I don't know, I'm not, but uh, cost of living is projected to be quite a bit higher than that when it's calculated for year 22. Um, I would entertain a suggestion other than 2% from the board. Estimates are somewhere around uh, five to six percent for the board. Really? Yeah. Maybe I can get interest on my savings account again. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's not relevant discussion. <laughs> I've tried it all. The, the feds will be increasing their their prime lending rate here, pronto. Um, I I would. Uh, move to establish 2022 pay schedule for full-time employees at the current rate with a 4% cost of living increase. Retroactive to January 2nd. Ms. Moore? Wow. <laughs> Uh, it's a human resources website. 5.9 percent. I mean, that's what a happened to believing that's a the chairman when he says these things. The what? what happened to believing the chairman when he says these things? <laughs> it was verified. I think it's when he said Fox Business. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, so eh. <laughs> Well, said we always said. Well, you know, this is, this is a sticky thing. You know, we were talking about the mileage rate and saying, well, what, shouldn't it have been less last? Yeah, last year the rate gasoline prices went down, and now they've come back up again. But you can't predict at the beginning of the year what it's going to cost to drive your car. It just doesn't work that way in this country. Well, now, yeah, maybe so you can predict what's been going to cost this that's year. That's true, but, but we are also trying to 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 raise that level up to be balanced no. from what yeah. was no and I understand that other other reasons leave and is this our one shot deal at the beginning of the year we can change pays anytime well we don't want to go down <laughs> no um, just uh, uh, I just want to know that everybody's the, um, the, the pay periods for this 2021 ended on January 31st so we change, I would suggest we change January 2nd to January 1st. In other words, we're skipping one day of no pay. Uh, don't know it was a weekend. Maybe we'll right. that day. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we should just start with the January 1st. Whatever okay. you guys decide. You okay, I will you can change my motion. Just, I don't know, it's retroactive to January 1st. Thank you. And I uh, stand by the 4%. Is there a second? Sounds like sure. No. Oh. I if, hmm. happens every year. There's a motion and a second. Uh, so, um, what was going on in your mind, Marilyn? Your 
Oh, I, I just said, I was just thinking, you said you, ch you generally go up 2% every year. Well, for the last several years. For the last, for the last several years. Yeah. No, because we can't, if we go up every last few years 2%, then how will we stay at 2%? This year, well, you know, over every, but this year we want to go. This year we want to go four percent because we anticipate inflation and things like that. We have experienced. The country has experienced a close to six percent inflation for 2021. So, at the very least, all we're doing is hoping to make catch up. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay I'll second. Any further discussion? You're done. May we vote, please? Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Now we entertain a motion to establish holiday schedule for 2022 as follows. January 17th, Martin Luther King Day. February 21st, not the 18th, President's Day. Um, Memorial Day is uh, May 30th, uh, uh, Juneteenth. Um, as a new federal holiday, I think we should adopt uh, to our own holiday schedule. We are not incumbent upon doing that, but uh, I think tradition pretty much uh, is established that, that we follow federal holidays, uh, maybe not so much local holidays, but at least federal ones. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to add that at uh, June 19th. Uh, Independence Day is July 4th, Labor Day September 5th, uh, Columbus Day or uh, in, uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, depending upon whether you want to go with um, one or the other, or both, October 10th, Veterans Day, November 11th, Thanksgiving Day, November 24th. Uh, we do give employees the option of working Veterans Day uh, in order to have the uh, day after Thanksgiving Day, the 25th, uh, be taken. So it's one or the other, uh, not both. Uh, Christmas Day, the 26th, because Christmas falls on a Sunday, the 26th is on, on Monday, obviously. The same goes for New Year's Day, January 2nd, uh, 2023. Uh, is there uh, a move that we accept these holidays? Thank you. Is there a second? I second. A motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Correspondence briefly, OTA legislative alert, update from uh, Lee Sloan, the uh, attorney, update from Memory Forest about bio urns, uh, RPCC, Denver, December 28th, meeting cancellation. Uh, notice from the Auditor of State about the Hankel system, January 22, United Care, healthcare policy and procedure protocols. Uh, email requesting prices from Len Forson and Clifton Cemeteries. Uh, Margaret, are you going to respond to her again? I thought you did. No, I didn't. Somebody responded. Okay. I mean, I looked at it and I saw that somebody forwarded my email. Oh, maybe she was asking again. But it's, oh, okay. She was, apparently. Sure, well, yeah. I don't know why, but it didn't come to me. So, um, thank you. Bureau of Workman's Compensation Employee Update Webinar Notice, email about column bearing pricing. Um, it, it wasn't about pricing, it was about availability. He wanted to just, uh, again, let us know that, that granite is out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, hopefully waiting to arrive at a dock someday wow. and make its way to uh, Bell Fountain. Where's the casket company? Maybe that's where they are. Um, a ARPA reporting for any use email as a reminder that we have to report in April by April 1. Email from local government uh, consultants for 22. Uh, this is a um, uh, this is an offshoot operation that wants to help us uh, find opportunities how to spend our ARPA money. Notice from Kettering Health about vaccine requirements. That's for in house. Forward an email from the engineer about the ODOT funding, um, <coughs> which I'll make a quick pitch on our road report, which we don't have a road superintendent, he's ill. Happy holidays, happy new year from MVRPC, Green County um, Public Health regular meeting, notice of January, for January 6th. Why senior citizens, their senior notice newsletter, 
uh, MTFR December activity report. That would be to Bath Township, not just in general. Uh, Green County Department of Development invitation to have redevelopment grants meeting January 6th via Zoom. Uh, hoping to remember to do that. Fund status, corporation status, any other correspondence in or out from the board? Don Maryland? Nope. Not that I'm aware of. Well, let's move to the fire department report. Okay. Since the last meeting of the board, uh, we have had 38 EMS incidents, zero in Bath Township, and seven fire incidents, zero in Bath Township. Uh, fire incidents actually included two fires. Um, one just recently was a small cooking fire, which was contained to the stovetop uh, on Rice Road, I believe. Hmm. Um, and the other was on Christmas morning, one o'clock in the morning, a barn, well, storage shed barn type thing, at a Fairfield uh, pipe, uh, whatever it's called there. Fairfield, Fairfield. 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 <laughs> uh, residents uh, mysteriously caught on fire. Mm -hmm. um, crews were on scene within four and a half minutes and had the fire knocked down within a minute after that. Um, Cedarville, Zia Township, and Houston all assisted at that fire. What is that? Uh, Christmas morning. At the Unfairfield barn? Yeah. Yeah, it was a small barn. Um, the fire is suspicious in nature and is under investigation. Because things just don't typically catch on fire. In my experience. Was so, um, that in town? Yes. yes. Oh. This, the, uh, this wasn't moldy hay. Yeah. Yeah, this, <laughs> this wasn't. Um, so, it's about a $7,000 total loss. Uh, we'll return the case over to the police department oh, for further know. investigation. So. Uh, okay, got two resolutions for the board this evening. The first is uh, Resolution 2022-03, hiring of part-time personnel. Uh, I recommend that the board adopt this resolution to hire Thomas DeWitt as part-time, the uh, latest addition to our part-time firefighter paramedic ranks. Um, Thomas is a, currently employed as a full-time firefighter paramedic with Washington Township. Um, and is, is interested in uh, helping fill in some of the holes we have in our paramedic scheduling. Um, he is highly recommended and his interview went swimmingly, so we would like to Put him in, he'll be used to uh, fill paramedic coverage holes on Wednesday primarily, and with vacation coverage on one of the other uh, paramedics is on vacation. I entertain a motion to adopt resolution 22, 2022 03. I second. Oh, you can move. <laughs> Remove? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Right, right. Is there any Needed. further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Ms. Major? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, and he will be the first one hired under the increase pay rates. Uh, we'll have to look it up and see what it is. <laughs> what does that really mean? Really so? What you're saying is everybody got their pay raises, but he'll be the first new hire under. Actually, uh, no, when, if uh, back. I yeah, in October, November, when we were talking about the full-time position, uh, the discussion came up about raising the rates uh, for the, the paramedic personnel. Um, and we, haven't, we just haven't hired. My concept was that it would be triggered once we actually hired somebody. Uh, so now we have. So now, <laughs> so he'll get his bump up. Georgia will get one. Um, that's the other one that works for me. Ryan Evans, he'll get bumped up. And then... Uh, and then with this guy, then Nate and Jason put it in also, so. Uh, then next up for bids, uh, for you guys is resolution 2022-04, hiring of a uh, full-time employee. Uh, I recommend that the board appoint uh, Charles Klein to the full-time position of uh, third shift lieutenant. Uh, he'll be assigned to B shift, where Alex Wendt had worked and left us viciously. Um, uh, Mr. Klein will most likely start in early February. He was the, obviously the top candidate. He's the one who's focused. 
I would have broke his leg, but he should be back in fighting condition soon. His recovery is going well. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I entertain a motion to approve resolution 22, 202204. I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Do you have for the, any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Major? Oh, yes. <laughs> For purposes of con consistency, we may want to change the resolution president title to chair. Oh, did I? To my assistant. Okay. Uh, I can give you a better copy of that if you like. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we have another. Uh, so, last time I advised you. Uh, Georgia, uh, Georgia Go to be got her paramedic certification. Uh, now Luke Sorensen has also received his paramedic certification from Sinclair. So nice work, Luke. Uh, Luke is part time, works two to three shifts a month, usually filling. In, so he also works for Zena Township and Cedarville Township. Um, we have two volunteer members who will be starting EMT class. Actually, maybe well, tonight. Um, Peyton Cooper is attending Premier Health EMS Academy up in uh, Troy uh, at Upper Valley Medical Center. And Cole Schlereth will be attending at Clark State. Uh, both have uh, signed their service agreements to give us time after they pass the class. So that's good. Uh, and then we're looking at um, some grant opportunities. The federal government has suddenly released opened up the FEMA grants uh, without much fanfare because <laughs> we almost missed them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at doing an approximately $40,000 grant request to uh, under the assistance to firefighters grant, the AFG, to replace aging turnout gear, firefighter turnout gear. Mm -hmm. um, Sergeant Miller Jacobson went through all our gear and uh, did not give me positive news on the status of our gear. Unfortunately, turnout gear is only good for 10 years. Um, and uh, we have much that is beyond 10 years, or closing in on that 10-year mark. So uh, at approximately $2,600 a set, um, to get us back where we need to be. What's that word you keep saying? Turnout gear? Turnout gear. It's the, the protective gear that firefighters wear. Turnout gear. Yeah. Uh, we're also looking at, this one is a little farther down the road, so we have time to discuss, obviously, because there's a lot more. This one is uh, a safer grant, which is the Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Grant, also through FEMA, which is designed to supplement staffing. It's basically the fire department version of the COPS grant that the Justice Department does. Um, unlike the COPS grant, this one sunsets, so you get three years of funding. The idea is that then some other funding source picks up. And our thought is that um, this would help bridge until a new levy starts kicking in additional monies. But mm -hmm. we have to research further and figure out costs and come to you because there is a match. I mean, we'd have to be responsible. I think it's 5% for a community our size. Mm -hmm. uh, though I, I need to double check that because they change the rules all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, uh, Firehouse Subs um, has a public safety grant for fire departments. And uh, you have to have your service area within 30 miles of a firehouse subs, so we are, in fact. So we're looking at a possible 20,000 grant that would uh, cover replacement of a hydraulic rescue tool set, i.e. the jaws of life. Did we get one of those firehouse grants, or did we just apply a couple years ago? We applied and did not get it, but did we, get it? we were a little bit, after I read the grant, the guidance, and we submitted it, it seemed we were a little bit outside what they were you know, trying to do. So. Uh, so the AFG one we are actively working on right now, I'm just waiting on the, the quote from our dealer that um, state contract price has an increase coming, of course, because uh, the, uh, the guys who make the PBI material, DuPont, they've raised the rates, of course, because apparently, I, I don't know, just, everything's going up, so anyway, so we'll keep you posted on all those, and I'll 
hopefully have more info on the safer for the next meeting for you guys. Uh, and then last but not least, on the back side, just today's state of the station update. <laughs> Uh, Bay Door 4, which is the fourth one down this way, has once again decided it doesn't want to work. Uh, so we're supposed to have repair tomorrow. We'll see. And then I believe, knock on fake wood, we have the humidity issue tackled in the bunk, in the bunk room wing uh, with a combination of um, some adjustments, tweaking, uh, and uh, a balance of that system. But we're obviously monitoring the situation too. Humidity is probably a little easier to tackle in the middle of winter. Yeah. <laughs> There's not so much humidity. Yeah, we'll see what happens uh, when it gets warmer and see, see if it goes up to 75% again. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Which I'm still shocked the guys didn't tell us about that until months after the problem was going on. Mm -hmm. so my cold is wet every morning. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, is, that is the fire department report. I see. Anything else with fire chief? I had a couple things. Um, well, I heard we talked to you earlier today. <laughs> I know. And we're going to talk again. Um, I'm not sure. Was it Margaret? You brought this up, but there was a question about why the utilities at the Clifton Station seem to be substantially higher. One month to the next? I don't know, the natural gas. Because natural gas is what the last bill I saw. And then the question came up, are we paying for the senior citizens side? No. No, they have a separate meter. Mm -hmm. um, I'll send the guys over tomorrow and check thermostats and everything. Um, and I'll check with uh, Mayor Beery and see if they've everything over there. <laughs> but we kept those thermostats yeah. about 55. Mm -hmm. Make sure that back window is sealed shut. I don't know if it's a good point. Yeah, we'll check. Well, there, there, we pay a fund over there. There's 7811. That's 7811's our fax. That's our fax fund. Oh, but, okay. but I don't know if we do that anymore. Well, well, we shouldn't be paying that anymore because well, I'll, I'll I'll we'll that. we can cancel the Clifton fund. I thought we had, but. I thought we had too. That's 3211 is the, Clif the old Clifton phone number. Okay, well, maybe that, okay, give me a The fish is at AT&T, as they may not cancel. Well, I know we pay water and sewer, but that's, that's... 26 bucks a month. Yeah, that's pennies. There is uh, another roof leak, a significant roof leak at Clifton. Uh, I've met with the council over there last month, or is it this month? Well, no, this, this is January. This it would have been last month. Wow. Um, so... The mayor and I are working on that. I mean, not working physically on the roof, but we're <laughs> working to address it. Have you and Cedarville started working on your joint training operations? We are going to now. We It was put off with all the COVID stuff. We wanted all the guys together in one place, but mm -hmm. you know, we're going to start working. And the village is tickled pink with that idea. Uh, but we got to take care of this roof. And uh, in the world of I told you so, Mr. Richard, you told us so. Oh. The roof contractor we made got obviously did not do a good job in the past. So, mm -hmm. do you have any suggestions for a new roof contractor? Let me know. <laughs> uh, the village is, you know, we talked about pursuing grants that they can get that would help since they own the building. Help us with that roof repair. So, is this for repair or replacement? Depending on, I guess, what the contract, what a reputable contractor tells us. Okay. Well, I, I, I can give you one lead. Um, just for the general consensus uh, and perhaps the fourth estate, <laughs> would you just give us your nickel tour of where we are village-wise? Uh, COVID related? Sure. Um, calls, interest? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, certainly, hopefully, everyone's aware COVID cases are up significantly in the region and the state. Um, I, I think significance probably a, a small word for it, for what it is. Um, and our hospital, more importantly, the hospitals are not overwhelmed, but they're getting to that point. Uh, you know, 
the guys took a patient at the Soy Medical Center the other day and they had 54 patient holds in the emergency room. Those are patients who needed to go upstairs, but there was no room in the end for them. Mm -hmm. And that's the same story at every ER, from Green to Springfield Regional. Uh, you probably saw the story of you know the National Guard has arrived at Miami Valley to help them with with over uh, over overflow basically to, to relieve nurses and doctors so they can do their job while these guys do support jobs. Our numbers, I mean, in terms of patients that we're seeing, um, we've probably seen a 15 to 20 percent increase in patients who are, I'd say, COVID positive or COVID possible. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who think they have COVID and turn out not to, but we classify that as a you know, potential mm -hmm. um, with respiratory issues. I mean, if there's, they have a respiratory problem or a fever or something along those lines, uh, the dispatch software classifies it as a possible COVID patient. Um, and many of them do end up with COVID as a primary diagnosis when they go to the hospital. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of people who are less than seriously ill who were but interestingly, back in the first surge, if you guys remember, we stopped. I mean, our run numbers dropped stupendously everywhere because nobody wanted to go to the hospital. Um, now, oddly, people want to go to the hospital, <laughs> including a lot who don't necessarily need. So we're going to work on a public education campaign of, you, you may have seen in other places, like what's appropriate for your doctor, what's appropriate for urgent care, and what's for the ER. Uh, because they really need all the help they can get. And it's, you know, the last place we want to do, thing we want to do is take someone who doesn't need to go to an emergency room, sit in an emergency room for four hours with an army of COVID patients coughing and, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they wear masks, but you know, it's not what you can do. So. Colin, so do you still have a, a sense of the, the, the backup at the hospitals, how much of that is increased patients and how much of it is understaffing because of people not working either because they have COVID or because they decided it's, you know, not yeah, work. I mean it's certainly a combination of both. I mean there there you know a lot of especially in nursing staff, there are a lot of nurses who are leaving regular, you know, ER, critical care, or floor nursing to take jobs as travel nurses. Uh, they are making I mean, these nurses are making stupendous amounts of money oh, okay. for travel nursing. Uh, and, and and the nice part for a nurse is it's one, it's stupendous amounts of money, but it's also six weeks here, six weeks there, so you're always moving around. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little nicer than being in the same emergency room or the same critical care unit or whatever, or whatever. Uh, but a lot of it is just this increased, mass increase in patients. Oh, I don't, didn't mean um, to say that wasn't. No, no, but I mean, the staffing part is, I think people need to realize that too, that there are, you know, Miami Valley's a massive hospital for our area, and it's a giant ER with 80 plus beds. But unfortunately, they don't have as many staff as they have. 80 physicians, one for each bed. And we just actually received order. notification from Mercy Health that they are now actively employing paramedics in the emergency room to help relieve some of the burden from the nursing staff, So, which is something they have not done in the past. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's ugly out there. And it still remains primarily, at this point, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. But, and there's still people too. <laughs> but there's plenty of people yeah. Yeah. Um, in that category. And we have seen some people, you know, who have breakthrough infections. And we've had mm -hmm. staff here with, you know, Jason had a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily it was very minor, so. But yeah, our guys are still, I mean, that, we have the one guy who's on medical exemption, but he has to wear a mask anytime he's here. And our guys are wearing masks on every call, and N95s as appropriate, and anytime they go to the nursing home. And currently, you don't have any staff testing positive? No. Mm -hmm. No, we just tested two the other day, courtesy of friends. They mm -hmm. helped us out with that. And then we've got test kits on the way for our staff. So. OK, thank you. Um, the last thing I had for Colin was, and we briefly talked about this earlier, is I'm trying to think ahead, which I I have a tendency not to do, but I'm trying to think ahead. <laughs> and based on my experience with um, obtaining a new cabin chassis for a dump truck for the road department, I asked Colin earlier uh, 
if he thought we were in a position where we might consider um, pre-ordering or getting an order in for a new ambulance to replace 81, which is the oldest one. How old are we? 2005. 2005. So um, it's, it's definitely been problematic and certainly does not bode well for being a whole lot better in the future. But uh, what did you say their lead times? They were talking about 18? 18, 18 to 24 months. 18 to 24 months. Whereas as a, when we bought the last new one in 2016, we were going for like six months, yeah. I think. Yeah. So. So I would, you know, I would suggest uh, I would go far as making a board motion that to uh, al allow or encourage or however you want to say it the the fire department to begin exploring uh, what it's going to take to replace you know, a, a frontline uh, medic for our department and how quickly can that be done. You said frontline medic. You mean mm -hmm. ambulance? Correct? Ambulance medic unit. Yeah. Medic unit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Uh, I, uh, you know, I would like us to see uh, us have a you know, sort of a rolling inventory of you know what are the vehicles we have. When will they? Uh, built. But have there been special issues with any of them? When would be estimated, you know, just in an abstract way that they should be replaced? So, uh, addressing Chris, what you said at the very beginning, that I, I rarely look ahead, which may not be the case, but it seems like we should be permanently looking ahead and just have. Sort of a, a capital plan. I, in, in theory, I agree with you 100%. In in practice, it seems to work out. Uh, you know, the, the, the number one need gets met first, as opposed to the number one age or number one malady or, or whatever. For example, mm -hmm. uh, our oldest fire engine. Uh, we have obviously we have two fire engines, but our oldest one, uh, 81, is now out of service because uh, the transmission is not operating correctly, and it hasn't really had, had anybody who who's pinpointed the, the problem um, enough to get it back in service. So, do we spend three quarters of a million dollars on a on a backup? Well, well, you know, I mean, we have two, and you know, the amount of fires that we put out are compared to however however many EMS runs we have is just, you know, it's just incredibly out of balance. But so, where do we spend where do we spend that disposable income that we don't really have, but we can squeeze it out somewhere? Uh, yes, we need a, another fire engine, but we probably need to replace this ambulance before before that. Uh, and you can go down the line. Uh, I mean, the brush truck's fine. We don't, other than the old, no, we can't say that. We've got tanker because we have bad townships. Uh, yeah. Tanker. So, I mean, it's really the, the yeah, edge of those two big front line yeah. units. I mean, yeah. and the problem that we run into, like with the turnout gear, with the arbitrary 10 year limit, NFPA set 20 year lifespans on apparatus. Mm -hmm. Now, ambulances, they're done in their 20, I mean, with the exception of this one. Mm -hmm. um, fire engines, you know, they can usually go past 20. Some mm -hmm. technology changes. But then you've got a national standard, so if you're running a 20-year-old-plus engine and something happens, it comes back on, why didn't you know this? But, you know, that kind of liability issue. So. But, I mean, the ambulances are certainly the bigger workhorse and are a little on the more affordable side. Mm -hmm. um, which ain't saying much because a new ambulance is probably two hundred and eighty thousand at this point, mm -hmm. which is yeah. insane. Yeah. But compared to three quarters of a million dollars for a fire engine, mm -hmm. a no frills fire engine. Exactly. Or many low frills. You know, from listening over the years, you know, I get a different perspective, is that there are there are equipment needs to be replaced because it's truly worn out. 
or it's you know it's it's needing repairs to often, but there's often just upgrades that need to be made, and whether we don't even have a choice in that. I mean, right. morally, sometimes, sometimes just legally, we have to do it, and and that's another component that you it's hard to plan for. Right. And you know, you'd say, oh, well, we just need a new ambulance, and we can put all the components that are in the old ambulance in the new one, and it won't be so expensive. And then you find out, well, no, it's time to upgrade this and this and this and and on and go. And I, I mean, I think we've been. We've tried to be good. I mean, particularly not to puff anyone up, but you know, with, since Chris has been on the board, we've tried to put money aside for future apparatus. But as staffing costs have taken more of the budget, that money has really disappeared, and it kind of shoots your, you know, a plan ain't that good if it doesn't have any money to, to go with it. And we can say, well, this needs to be replaced this year, and then you lay off four guys, or you get an ambulance. <laughs> so. Um, just to be clear, self-driving ambulance. If, if this right. medic was available in, in, tomorrow, mm -hmm. we would take the funds in the general fund that we have from the proceeds of the fire department. This is the old fire department sale. Uh, we have uh, somewhere in the half a million dollar range sitting in there. So we, we could easily pull an ambulance out of there if, if we absolutely needed to. Now, if it turns out that the, the lead time on this thing is 24 months, we'll be into the next levy by then. And so we may not we right. go into that. And if we have extra money, we might be able to put it towards, you know, one lease payment or uh, two lease payments on a new fire truck. But, you know, who knows in the future what you know what that would bring. But we are not spending money that we don't have. Is what I want to make sure that the board right. understands. And I mean, you it's know, not fire department money, unfortunately, yeah. but it is money yeah. that's available so, to spend. And you know, anytime you slap the word fire. In front of anything, more emergency medical, you know, skyrockets sure. the cost. You sure. Know, the ambulance costs have gotten insane. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we can't build our own, so I guess we could. <laughs> well, are there wealthy enough fire departments that they turn over their equipment before it's worn out? Is there a used equipment market that's reasonable? There is, but most places nowadays with just national budgets are turning it over right at the the threshold. They're, they're so I mean, they'll go to small volunteer fire departments, but there are certainly departments that are in Westerville just bought a ladder truck that was one point seven million dollars. So wow. Well, I was just wondering whether there was any way to get a, a newer fire truck as opposed to a brand new fire truck. Yeah, there is a market, but not as old. There used to be a much bigger market because when times were better, mm -hmm. I mean, not that they're terrible now, but I mean trucks were being turned over a 10 year mark or something. Um, but now places are holding on to their trucks to the full max, or you get like a New York City fire engine after eight years, but it's, <laughs> it's been used. It's got a lot of, <laughs> it's got a lot of use to it. Um, well, <clears throat> so I'm, I was not opposing what you're suggesting. I'm just saying, let's do it in the context of sort of an abstract view of or listing of our equipment, how old it is, and uh, and and partly I'm I'm speaking because I'm not, and I can't rattle off all this. I can't list it. I don't have that institutional memory. Yeah, I can certainly provide um, it. That's that's easy. And that that knowledge should start to get out beyond just the the trustees or just the fire department set the stage for you know, going to the community and saying, this is what it's costing us, and uh, do, we, do, we, do you want it or not? And, and I don't, I'm not saying that we go to the community on a specific piece of equipment, but to, to mm -hmm. uh, broaden the knowledge about our capital investment. Well, I think that will also help guide discussions on future levy, mm -hmm. coupled with staffing costs and all that kind of stuff, on what we actually will need. So. But anyway, did you guys vote on that motion? We didn't really make a motion. Oh. Was it right? Well, I, I did move. What did you move? I moved that we authorize the fire department and the chief to explore the possibility, what, what the options are for purchasing a new medic and how much it would cost and how much time, lead time there would be. Yeah, I, I didn't hear a motion. It was uh, a I, I, moved, 
Okay, I'll second it. Any further discussion on that motion? Just to repeat that <laughs> as you do it, create a broader context. Well, there. We'll call that the Mark Crockett five-year plan. <laughs> well, maybe the, the context is uh, what are the costs of employment? <laughs> You know, that's, that's, big, that's the big context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's both the please. juggling act we're here. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Let us move to the cemetery report. If uh, you'll excuse me, I've got to go get on a Zoom call with the state fire marshal. Sure. You say hi for us. Mm -hmm. I will. Oh, well, yeah. It's exciting as the last one. <laughs> uh, obviously, Dan is ill this evening and not with us. The only thing on the cemetery that I'm just going to throw out here, and, and we'll talk about it more as we go along, is, as you recall, uh, we made application to the um, uh, to the to the state for their one-time ODOT uh, grant money possibilities, uh, so we could resurface some of the roads or the roads, I should say, in Glen Forest Cemetery. And the conventional wisdom appears to be that uh, with 1,300 uh, applications out there, it might be a difficult road to hoe to, to, to be awarded this. And I just wanted to put out that if, in fact, we are not awarded this grant, which I certainly look forward to us being awarded it, that we might consider taking uh, maybe half the amount that the grant would have been, somewhere around $60,000 and going ahead and resurfacing the, the three worst areas in the cemetery, the three that are nothing but uh, gravel and grass. Uh, you know, they, they barely even resemble uh, a lane. And to have those resurfaced and, and tied in with the other uh, paved portions of the cemetery. Did you say you put taking half the grant amount? A, a, the approximately half the grant. That's what I roughed out. It was sixty thousand. So you're saying to take thirty thousand? No, it was like one hundred and twenty-five, okay. I think. And so okay, maybe yeah. around sixty. And take it from where? Take it from the cemetery. We have eighty-five thousand in the cemetery account. So we're going to end up. We yeah, have. Yeah, to, I just, I just want to you know, make sure. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to spend 17 for, for the second columbarium, or the final columbarium price or cost, um, and and after that, that money is available. Could could that be included in the county engineer's uh, mm -hmm. sort of group contract rate? It, it could it could be, I guess depending upon the timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd have to ask. We have to ask Dan, you know, how how flexible that is. A lot of times, if we say we'd like to have uh, Lamont Drive uh, ground down and, and then and then paved, um, fine. And we had to commit that in February. Generally, we have to do it relatively early. Well, when July comes around, a lot of times you can add a road, you know, or two to the work. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so I'm not, I'm not really sure on the answer to that. So and I don't know when the grant decisions are made either. So this is something that we will continue to discuss yeah. with mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Any thoughts? I think that I'd like to drive through the cemetery to look at the drills, but sure. Okay. Uh, well, what, what, what were you asking for now? Um, no, nothing. But just it was a, just a just point a, of interest. Okay. Just something I'm Based thinking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the western road cemetery. The old roads, not the new ones. Yes, correct. Okay. okay, then we're at roads. Um, mm -hmm. I think we'll let the roads speak for themselves. If they have anything to say, they can come and talk. <laughs> They're tired. Yeah, they are tired. Um, Four tires. Now, fist bumps are report. Now, now we're talking. Now we're getting into the meat of this deal. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> for for Maryland's sake, every year we um, we set the temporary appropriations for 
I should have. Everybody got a copy of that. Yes, yeah, the mm -hmm. long piece of paper. Um, and um, just to get us started, so that we, we can't, I can't spend a penny until I, we have it appropriated and aligned and you know, so approved by the trustees. And, um, so, um, and the appropriations that are that we start out with temporarily are basically the first, they would technically cover the first quarter of the year until we get, um, until we get more money. <laughs> get more money. And, and, and um, it's based on what we have on cash on hand right now. I can't appropriate above and beyond what our cash supply is. I mean, we'll get more money in all these, in all these funds. It'll come, but it's not always there right away. So you can't so, appropriate the whole year until you... No, it, and basically what we'll do then um, three, whenever we, you know, I'm happy to, especially since we have a newcomer here, to get together and, you know, we can iron out some of these, some of these um, appropriations. And, um, um, and then, so, but, but I, my, the, the cutoff date is March 15th is when we as a body have to have our permanent appropriations set and adopted. That's um, for the whole, for the that's rest for the, the rest of the year. Yeah, but then again, as you maybe recall, in the couple meetings you've been to, I was always amending our permanent appropriations, adding a little more money here because we run, you know, because <laughs> you try and try and make it, um, try, you know, based on last year's ex expenditures and stuff, how much you're going to need, but stuff happens. So anyway, that's what this first that's what this first um, resolution is. Would you like me to read it? Please. Okay. It's um, Resolution 2022-01. Be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of said sums, Board of Trustees, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 20, dang, don't it, 23. <laughs> the dang, of course, not in there. Um, the attached sums being in the same or hereby set aside temporarily appropriate for several purposes for which expenditures are to be made for and during said fiscal year. Now, therefore, the Miami Township Trustees uh, approve these temporary appropriations during the fiscal officer to submit these sums, su submit these sums to the county office. It is December 31, 22. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh I did. <laughs> I'm a little tired today. <laughs> is there a motion? It was, it was right all along, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay. Is there a motion for approval of Resolution 2201? Certainly. Is there a motion for approval of Resolution 2201? I so move. Is there a second? A motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Here, none. May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Demetrius? Yes. Okay, and then also, as a matter of um, first year business, we established a case schedule for the trustees and myself. That's resolution 2022-02, whereas it is the intent of the township to authorize the annual pay schedule of the board of trustees and the fiscal officer, and whereas a maximum annual salary is determined by the state of Ohio's revised code, now therefore the annual salary of the trustees and the fiscal officers not to exceed the maximum, al amal sorry, maximum allowable amount set by the state and is payable on a monthly basis commencing January 1, 2022. Is there a motion for approval of Resolution 2202? It, it's just saying that, oh, I should have read my stuff. It's just saying that we're going to. You're not going to be overpaid. I'm not we're gonna, that's we're going to be paid, but we're not going to be and overpaid. If you want, to, if you want to take that's less, cool. you can. <laughs> that's true. I think about that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I move that you adopt. Okay, great. Is there a second. motion and a second? Second. Any further discussion regarding the adoption of this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Okay, then, and here we go. Now, resolution 2022 05. The way the system's set up, if I make one little boo boo of a number here and there, mm -hmm. I cannot complain. So once, once you click save on that screen, you can't go back and amend it. You have to go by, now I have to go by resolution. So, and this is something we need to talk about 
we can talk about it now or whenever, but um, accidentally, oh, well, let me just read it. Okay. <laughs> Amendment of temporary appropriations. Now we just adopted our, former, our, our temporary appropriations, now I have to amend a couple of them. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize the amendment of the following temporary appropriations in the gas tax. I need to increase trustee salaries by $155.98. In the fire fund, I um, basically neglected to even put a number in this line of, of paying the boards and commissioners, which is paying the volunteers, and uh, increase that by $13,000. That's how much that will need for the first quarter. The Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion for adoption of resolution 2022-05? I, I assume uh, there's a multiple there's a multiple motion. Is there I'll a sing, second. singular second? There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding the adoption of this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Okay, I want to say I need clarification. Um, I know that um, somewhere along the way we decided that the we didn't need the fire fund to put any money to it. We didn't need to split our salary between mm -hmm. the fire fund mm -hmm. and the road and general. Mm -hmm. So then, for some reason, when I was um, when I was doing these appropriations, I thought I remembered that we also decided somewhere along the way that we weren't going to have that the general fund was going to cover our salaries 100%. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay, good, because that's what I set it up to do. Okay. But the uh, reason why I had to add money to um, 2021 mm -hmm. because last year we got um, we were still there was a point where we were still taking money out of the road mm -hmm. Mark's page pay wasn't issued until this year mm -hmm. so there I go I had no money in that line so that's why I had to add that that's what Mark's portion of the gas tax went up with. that's why that's there See? I just wanted you to know Thank you for your yeah, explanation. So much. Okay, that'd be great. Right, I think we are done, right? Yeah. Any, any other questions for the fiscal officer this evening? Um, but again, Marilyn, especially, you know, I know you're like a nine to five or eight to whatever, but sometimes if you want to. Only for a few moments. If you want, well, if you want to have a chat, and, yeah, and, and anybody, because our, our numbers are getting a little. Okay, let's have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not right now. Maybe oh, we need to yeah, have okay. the numbers yeah. in front of us, you know, when we have time to yeah, totally. just just review. There might be look at the uh, appropriations and yeah. As um, I look through, and I'm, I'm concerned about the fire levy fund for sure. You know, I don't have any hardly any money in the EMS billing. I couldn't appropriate all the lines that we needed because there's just not enough money there right now. So anyway, okay. Ed, whenever you guys are interested, anybody individually or as a group, I'm happy to. We can. Yeah, maybe we should meet individually so they don't have to sit through basic stuff. That's fine. And then, All right. Are you hearing us, Mr. Newford? I certainly am. Okay. Hey. Corporations 101. Hmm? Corporations 101. Yeah. Got it. Started, yeah. I just, you know, yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay. I, I don't want, they don't have anything else. I don't think. But if somebody has a question for me or a comment or some gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing at this point, okay? <laughs> but you need to come over here so you can play to the camera. <laughs> Nobody can see the performance. Thank you the for your report. Okay. Hearing cheeks. it is enough, I'm sure. <laughs> Nobody appreciates me. <laughs> well, let's move on to the ever exciting zoning. <laughs> ever exciting. Oh, ever always exciting. Uh, no permits issued the last month. Uh, the Zoning Commission uh, did some final, hopefully, tweaking of the, of the PUD chapter, and um, I went through it for typos and other little details, and if we've got all that together, we'll send it down to Regional Planning for their review, and everything is good there, we'll be, of course, scheduling hearings for that. Um, you have before you, I imagine um, my, my annual report um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because there because there are a lot of numbers that I think come across a little more clearly in the 
graphs, but I issued 18 zoning permits for a total build, building value of 2538500 dollars and that generated permit fees of $1,449.25. These permits represent five new homes, five residential additions, and eight accessory structures. And those were four storage buildings, one solar array, one barn, and two garages. Um, Fifteen of the permits and roughly two million of the value was issued east of the bike path, while three permits and a value of 421,000 were issued west of the bike path. Now, I've been giving that split over the years just to kind of talk about, you know, we look at the township sort of differently from the, the threat of Beaver Creek or, or whatever, and, and you know, the, the, maybe the more rural other side. And for a couple of reasons, and one was just learning that our way the auditor designates the parcels in the township, if, if they designate them according to which school district the, the property is in. So it makes it very easy to actually split the permits in a slightly different way, which is the people that are in the Yellow Springs School District and the people in the Cedar Cliff School mm -hmm. District. And I thought, well, that makes a little more sense in sort of giving a sense of what's happening with the focus on Yellow Springs, what's happening you know, way out there in that other part of the township that people, a lot of people don't hardly know exists. Mm -hmm. And it's much more oriented towards Cedar Cliff. Okay, so if we do it that way, then 1.6 million was in the Yellow Springs School District and own and um, oh, I think I've got a typo here. Yes, and it's, yeah, the four shouldn't be there. It's 907,000, so it's under a million in the in the Cedar Cliff School District. Um, like 907? 907, yeah. Just, just take that four out of there. Um, and the, that, those properties that made the switch, one on Grinnell Road, which we kind of associate with Yellow Springs, one on Hyde Road, which we associate with Yellow Springs, and four on William and Mary Court. There was a, a surge of activity on William and Mary Court. Um, the, the charts down here at the bottom show you how things have, have, have progressed over the years. And you can see that, that um, well, that permit fees in new homes, and I, I thought it was interesting when I got them, both there on the page, both the same scale and everything, that you'd say, well, well yeah, they, they ought to kind of match. Permit fees ought to relate how many new homes are going on. And you see that that's true until you get to 2013. And suddenly there's only two homes and there's a huge amount. Well, that's because we had a multi-million dollar home built that year. But then the other thing that I thought was interesting is, so we look at 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, and we're talking about two to five houses being built. And look at those price bars. Mm -hmm. You can see that people are, either inflation has caught up with us or people are building much bigger and fancier houses <coughs> than they used to. Um, Is it because the fees correlate with the price of the house? It's, it's basically the, the price of the house. I mean, almost these figures that I give you, are almost all of that, those dollars are in, the, in houses. The, the cost of, the, of a garage or a, or a solar array or whatever is almost in, insignificant. Some of the additions are enough to matter. In, in fact, if one thing that doesn't show up here is I had one house which was in such bad condition, it, the permit came in as, as a remodeling permit, but they were essentially rebuilding the house. There was only one very small part of it they were keeping and they were adding you know, $300,000 worth of additions. So it was, it was effectively a new house, but technically it was an addition. Just real quick, if you're building an expensive house, your fee is more. Yes. The, those, all right, that amount of those, those fees um, $180 of it was the $10 we charged for a permit, no matter what. And right, the rest of it that, that reflects percent. the amount of the um, building. So it's, it's $5, it's the easiest way for most people to understand, it's $5 for every $10,000 worth of, of structure. So if you have a $200,000 house, you're going to be paying $100 
in addition to the basic $10 fee. Um, I issued four permits to work along township roads and signed five survey records. The survey records have created six new potential building lots. And I think all of those that, that were creating dividing parcels were intending to have lots to sell for homes. There wasn't any other kinds of divisions going on. Um, the largest effort of the Zoning Commission this year has been the revision on the section on plan unit development, as I just mentioned, with May finally about to wrap that up. Um, and not that it was a big deal, but we had had one person employed taking minutes for, for quite a number of years, and, and she retired, and we were able to find a new minute taker without, without too much trouble, and that's, that's worked smoothly. Uh, it's interesting, even with the, web, with the website and, and other sources, I still get a steady stream of calls of people asking me about what they can do and what they can't do and, and so forth and so on. Um, the work with regional planning uh, has picked up a little bit as the pandemic restrictions have lessened and a new staff are in place. There was a major transition at that organization, the new director and, and, and basically all new full-time staff. Um, <coughs> Very it's, competent full-time staff, too. Very <laughs> it's that the change, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. A great um, change. And it's, it's, and it's, just, it's just been nice to, to, well, Marilyn, the regional planning for, for almost as long as I've been a zoning inspector has had uh, periodic meetings where all the zoning inspectors in Green County are invited to get together and learn of the latest things regional planning can tell us about or have speakers or hear about our own problems and, and share that. And, and that, had, that had effectively stopped. And um, not that everybody always participated in that, but it was something that was missed. And uh, at least for me, I'm, I'm glad that that's somewhat back in place. Um, a couple of major events happened this year that, I mean, are going to be more noticeable. I, I shouldn't say that there haven't been other major annexations. For example, most of Glen Helen was annexed into the village, but that doesn't have much impact on, on Miami Township government. But the land that, that um, the portion of the land that the Ober Corporation uh, purchased that was in Miami Township was annexed into the village. So uh, that's a, a significant change. Um, and we did rezone a parcel on Hyde Road. Um, not that that's going to change anything at, at all. Um, as, as I alluded, the Board of Zoning Appeals continues to be active. There was an administrative review concerning agritourism and a temporary exemption concerning commercial use on agriculturally zoned land. Um, and we've got... Um, hearing scheduled on the 13th, but fortunately this is just a, a variance of a setback. <laughs> I hope it's a nice quiet meeting. We'll find out. Don't, um, don't expect to have to hire anybody for directing parking. No, 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 no special costs, no, no parking attendance. Okay. Uh, we could probably have it in the little conference room <laughs> rather than in here. Probably good. But, uh, we, but we've, we're, we're keeping those guys earning their, their gift cards. <laughs> Um, and that's the gist of it for the end report, but if anybody has any questions in, in, uh, about the past year or would like more information on some aspect of zoning, I'll be happy to pull it together. Don? I think nothing tonight. Marilyn? Um, I think I almost called you in the past week. Mm -hmm. um, it, with you, you don't have a cell phone, do you? No. So it's always cold call, right? It, it, yeah, I have a machine you can answer, oh, yeah, but okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can talk too. Yeah. Okay. So it just every time I have a question, I wonder something. I would. Well, you can also me. email me if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. But no. Okay. By all means, when you have a question, call. Call. I don't. I have. I have no problem answering the phone. Okay. It's not a. And, you know, if, if something was really happening where I didn't care, I wouldn't answer it. And you would talk to the machine, but I rarely do that. I almost always talk to people. But if you want to make it, you know, 
you, you woke up in the middle of the night with a zoning question and dial her his email. Or a lengthy conversation. Yeah, yeah. or we can schedule a time to, okay. to talk okay. in person or on the phone. And I, I've, read, I've read the PUD thing, and you're saying it's, that it's not done. Generally well, not done. But we... You're still tweaking it. Tweak, tweaking meaning... I mean, for example, what I did spend a half a day on was making sure, you know, like you have section one, subsection A, sub subsection, you know, one parentheses or something, just trying to make that same format uniform throughout the chapter and making sure that, oh, we took something out, but everything didn't get renumbered. So it was doing that, those sorts of things, or, um, you know, nothing that changed the, in any way the, Hopefully, the intent or the, the wording of the code, it was just, or there was a, you know, a line missing or, or something like that. And so I have questions about the process because I don't know it yet. Okay, no. um, and um, I don't want to bore these good people with it. No, so no. We, can, we can talk sometime. That's okay. okay. How what, does whatever it? you want. Yeah. Did you make any uh, calls or inroads on uh, Shaddock's property? I went out myself, um, oh, it was in December sometime, I don't remember exactly, with, with the thought of, of standing there and taking some pictures and realized that, that standing on the road, what people are bothered by is, is fairly far away. I, um, I you know, looked at the pictures and like, oh, well, that's a little hard to, to tell. Um, Mrs. Shattuck came out and, and you know, and, and of course, sort of initially upset, and I explained what was going on and this or that, and and we ended up parting, I think, on good terms. Um, there, there has been progress. In other words, there's not as much sitting out there and all around as there was when, when the big move occurred, mm -hmm. and and she felt anyway that the progress was going to continue, and, and I said, well, you know, you. It's, it's just difficult not having any deadlines or whatever in, in terms of, of um, pleasing everyone. And, and I said, you know, not that, it's, that it, it's a great solution, but you can put up a fence. It's people looking at, at what they don't like mm -hmm. is the problem, not you having it. You know, that's, that's, that's fine. And, but, you know, for, for whatever reasons, that's not easy to do. Um, anyway, I, I said, you know, I was gathering information that we were still having people that concerned and that the trustees were, were interested in the situation, but I didn't go any further than that. What, what's your intent, your next step, if anything? Well, I think probably I'm gonna try and call and talk with Jim again and and try to get a feeling. I mean, you know, he when I talked to him the first time he was very belligerent, but he, you know, in the end said, well, I'll, you know, I'll deal with it over the summer and it'll be, you know, pretty good in September. Well, as I say, it was much better, but it wasn't finished. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, he's He doesn't like to be told what to do, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that he's totally oblivious to, to the, the concerns of his friends and neighbors. And, and I think that um, it, it may be, my, my sense right now is that maybe we'll, we'll get there uh, in the most practical manner by being patient rather than trying to push. Okay. I didn't know if you had you know, any any legal roads you wanted to go down or not? Well, so not not, not maybe, yet. If you want, I'll, yeah, I'll keep you posted. Wait them out a little bit. Good. Okay. Anything else? Mm, don't think so. Anything else for <coughs> zoning? Your own. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, new business, old business. Uh, I have one bit of new business. I'd like to request a very brief executive session for uh, purposes of uh, contract negotiations. So I moved, and someone's going to second. I'll second. Yeah. Uh, Too late. <laughs> we have to vote. All, all, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay.
Mm -hmm. No. Well, you do those voice votes, you got <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, oh, thanks, Carol. No decisions made as a result of the executive session. We'll continue with the public uh, public meeting. Uh, is there any old business before us this evening? Not that I. Uh, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. A second. <laughs> second. I move. Okay, Mr. Hollister moves. Was I supposed to second? No. Yeah. And just a little too quick on the draw. We had to practice. Generally. No, it's generally no. The, the chair. I'm in, asks I'm in favor of the adjournment. So that takes the other two people to. Oh, they got it. Yeah. All right. Bye. You know what? We did um, Thank we did. you, everyone. Oh, you did. You're so good. So I <laughs> was.